Griffith for your five minutes of questions. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. And Mr. Secretary, I appreciate you saying earlier that uh, you were willing to work with all of us, and I, I do greatly appreciate that. On May 14th of 2020, almost a year ago, uh, we had a hearing uh, in our committee, and uh, a Michael Bowen of Prestige Ameritech told his story about how he invested in machinery to make uh, masks, uh, et cetera. At that time, our country was struggling to find the PPE necessary uh, just for the our uh, Would the gentleman suspend for a moment because the yes. clock is not correct? Uh, whomever's in charge of it, please reset the clock so that the gentleman's uh, five minutes are, uh, but he has the five minutes. No, please reset the clock, whomever's in charge. Well, why, why doesn't the gentleman continue? I'm sorry. Right, so I'll try and uh, time you on my watch. How's that? Yes, ma'am, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you for so, talking about Mr. Bowen. <laughs> yeah, so, Ms., so uh, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Bowen was very concerned and, you know, he wanted us to guarantee him contracts uh, with the federal government because the last time he had done this, uh, geared up and started making more masks, as soon as our crisis was over or as soon as there was a supply from foreign suppliers, all of a sudden he had no business. The, the Asian markets uh, shut him out. Uh, they put a lot of products onto the market at low prices. And he was not able to, uh, to to compete effectively and had to shut down a lot of his equipment, had it put in mothballs, et cetera. And before he geared it back up, he wanted to know, are we going to be buying American? Likewise, since that time, a number of companies, as a, as a result of the need in this country, a number of companies in my district and across Virginia started making PPE. Uh, there's, a, there's a company that I've been talking with out of uh, Elaine Loria's district. There's a company in my district. Uh, I know there's at least three or four in my district that have started, and they're all saying the same thing. Now that uh, you know the Asians have gotten a hold of the situation, they are once again uh, dominating the market. Um, and in fact, one of my sources tells me that a, a recent contract was let where they could have competed just fine, but th th they weren't even aware of it. And a lot of folks who are supplying the federal government and other governments are, in fact, um, using the, the, the sources that, that are, you know, all approved, et cetera, and then they outsource it to China and other countries. So what are we going to do? Do we need, and I would submit that we do, but I want your opinion. Do we need a Barry style amendment to say that the federal government's going to buy its PPE from American manufacturers? Because if not, every time we have a, a crisis, we're going to have another boom and bust. You said earlier, you you didn't like boom and bust funding. That's what these small businesses in, in the United States are now facing who were willing to make the PPE, make it at a reasonable cost, and sell it to whomever. But if they're just going to get shut down every time by uh, markets overseas, it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense for long-term policy in the United States. What say you, Mr. Secretary? Congressman, what I say is I am with you in everything you just said. Uh, if we didn't learn a lesson from COVID uh, that too much of our supply was not at our disposal. And by the way, that is a risk for the life and health of our people if we have to depend on others, then we're in trouble. Not only that, why is it that we can't have Americans producing what Americans need? And uh, President Biden is on top of this. And we have a $10 billion fund that you all made possible through the American Rescue Plan and other initiatives to try to make sure, sure we boost domestic manufacturing. And we're going to be on that one. And I hope you all will work closely with us because we want to prove to Americans that if they're willing to make an investment and produce here, we want to support them because there is no excuse for us to have to go somewhere abroad to get masks when we got Americans willing to produce them here. And by God, I think this is one that we could take on uh, on a bipartisan basis. Well, I would agree it can be bipartisan. It's masks, it's gowns, it's, it's gloves, it's everything. And on January 25th of this year, the president signed an executive order uh, ensuring the future is made in all of America by all of America's workers. 
uh, and ask each of the agencies to look into that. Do you know what your agency has found out so far or what we can do even before we can maybe get a bill passed? We're going to continue to uh, do the work on that. I, we can report to you back. I look forward to talking to you on that. But what I can tell you is this, that uh, we're going to make sure that uh, the $10 billion that have, made, have been made available for the De Defense Production Act are, are accountable dollars and that Americans take a look at where it went. And so we have to be transparent in, how, in the use of that money. And I hope you all will work with us to make sure that we bird dog that one. Well, I, I heard from the uh, chair of the full committee that we're going to be doing an OOR. Is my time up, Madam Chair? Uh, just about. I think right. we have five seconds left. All right. I'm just going to say we're going to have to talk some more about OOR, but I would like to see us buying all the PPE for those facilities uh, from American sources. Thank you. I yield back, Madam Chair. Amen to the gentleman. Uh, the chair now recognizes.